What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over what optionals are, and this is actually considered another data type in Swift. And I'm just going to be going over the basics in this video and in the future, it will become much more clear how we use these. But try your best to follow along with this video here. And if it doesn't make sense immediately, it's okay. We won't be using it for another few weeks, but it's definitely good to understand as we start coding. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a couple of optionals. And to do this, we can go ahead and create a variable and it's going to be X of type int. And this is going to be followed by a question mark. And a question mark just essentially tells the program that there might be a value there or there might not be a value there, but you should definitely check if there's a value there before trying to use this. Then we have the second type of optional. So if we go ahead and type in var y, and we can say it's also of type int, but this time we will use an exclamation mark. And what the exclamation mark says is that this value or this variable right here is guaranteed to have a value. And the reason the exclamation mark should not be taken lightly is because we're telling the program that this is 100% not an empty variable and that you can use it. And usually this is where you end up having an app crash because a lot of people like to use this on a value that is empty and the program doesn't know how to handle it, so it crashes. So the exclamation mark just guarantees that this variable is not empty. But if we go ahead and print both x and we go ahead and print y as well, we're going to notice in the console that we're going to have an output of nil for both. And also the code editor is not really happy about that because we're creating some real nonsense. But what we can do is go ahead and type in x equals 10, for example. And now if we go ahead and print x, you're going to notice that in the console, we're going to get a new data type called an optional. So right now we wrapped the value and we told the program that there is a value there. And now all we have to do is process this to try to extract that value so that we can later use it on. And we can also go ahead and print y and you'll get the exact same result or actually I forgot to assign a value there. So y is going to equal five. And when we run the program, we're going to get two different optionals. But now what I'm going to show you is how we can perform a check so we can actually make sure that our program does not crash and that it handles these optionals appropriately. So we're going to start by creating an if statement. And inside here, we're going to check if x is not equal to nil, then we can create a block. And inside this block, if it is not empty, we're going to go ahead and print x is, and then we need to provide a backslash followed by parentheses. And inside here, we can provide x. And since we know it's not empty, we're going to go ahead and add the exclamation mark because here we guarantee that x is not going to be empty. And the exclamation mark just helps us with unwrapping the value. Else, if x does happen to be empty, we want to handle that accordingly. So inside here, we're just going to go ahead and print x is nil because there is no value there. But now let's go ahead and run the program. And you're going to notice it's going to output 10 because it is not empty. But as soon as we take away the x, we're going to get x is nil because x is equal to nil, which means we have no value to process here, which also means that we can just go to the next statement and process something else over there. Because actually, if we remove all of this, the else and this one over here, and we just print x is that, we're going to get an error. It's going to say unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And this is usually what makes your app crash. So we have to go ahead and assign a value there. And then we need to make sure there's a value inside here so that the app does not crash. That's why it's very important to use if else statements to find out whether there's a value or not. But now there's actually one more feature I want to show you that involves optionals, and that is the, the nil coalescing operator. So to use this, all we have to do is go ahead and create a variable, and it's going to be called final value, and that's going to equal x, question mark, question mark, y, then we're going to go ahead and print the final value. So if we go ahead and run the program, we're going to get the optional of 10 because what this does is check 
whether x is nil and if x is not nil, it's going to print x. Otherwise, if x is nil, it's going to use this coalescing operator and it's going to print y. So we can just go here and we can go ahead and run the program. And you're going to notice it's going to default to y because x was empty. And since we still did not unwrap any of these values, to actually get the value in the end, we have to add an exclamation mark. So usually you would not use this with two optionals because if both of the optionals end up being empty, you're going to have a big problem. Usually you would just go ahead and type in, let's say var y of type int is going to equal 10. So there we have a default value. And actually I should change this or else we will not notice a difference. Now, when we run the program, we're going to get a value of 10 because x does have a value and is not nil. But if we go ahead and remove that, we're going to get five as the output because y is the default value we decided to use. And that's how we can use the nil coalescing operator. But to put this into some very light context, in the future when we make network requests or we need to wait for a value that comes from an API or from a calculation, a lot of the times we're going to end up with something that is going to be possibly nil, which is very important to keep into consideration because we cannot use these values until we know that there's actually a value there. So using the exclamation mark and using the question mark is going to save us a lot of trouble with understanding what we can use and what we can't use. But of course, guys, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.